Today we're going to be talking about how to use a triple integral to find the volume of a solid, and in this particular problem we've been asked to find the volume of the tetrahedron, which is enclosed by the plane 2x plus y plus z equals 4, and the coordinate planes. So a couple things we want to say first. When we're talking about coordinate planes, we mean the xy coordinate plane, the xz coordinate plane, and the yz coordinate plane the three planes which each run along two of the three axes. So we have three coordinate planes, those are going to be enclosing three sides of our tetrahedron. Also, remember that a tetrahedron is just a pyramid. It's like a three-dimensional triangle. It looks just like a pyramid. So that's the kind of shape we're dealing with. And if you can imagine that three sides of it, that its base is in the xy coordinate plane, and that two sides, two of its three vertical sides, are pushed up against the xz coordinate plane and the yz coordinate plane. And then the third side is at a slant. That gives you kind of an image of what we're talking about. Talking about. What we can do to help us also is we can draw an xy coordinate plane. This is just our typical two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system where we have x and y axes. We know that the base of the tetrahedron is going to look something like this. It's going to intercept the x-axis and the y-axis, and it's this triangle shape which forms the base of the tetrahedron. We can get a couple of pieces of information about the tetrahedron by manipulating this equation a little bit here. So, for example, we can find out where this line here intercepts the x-axis and y-axis. So if we want to know this point right here, where it meets the x-axis, all we do is plug in 0 for y and z, and we can say 2x plus 0 plus 0 equals 4. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x equals 2. So we know this point is at 2, 0. Now what about this point where the line meets the y-axis? Well, we just plug in 0 for x and z. We get 0 times 2, which is 0 y plus 0 equals 4, and we see that y equals 4. So we know that this point is at 0, 4. So we're starting to get a little bit of a feel for the base of our tetrahedron. If we sketch this in three-dimensional space, and let's just do this, won't necessarily be to scale, but we'll call this x, y, and z right here. So we know that the tetrahedron comes here to 2, 0. So if we call that 2 right there, 2, 0. And then this is at 0, 4. So we go out kind of double the distance here, 0, 4. We know that the base of our tetrahedron looks like this. It's this triangle right here. That's the base. And then we know that two sides of it are going to extend up along the coordinate axes to some point z. So let's say that our tetrahedron stops at this point along the z-axis. Then we have this wall here, and we also have our third wall along the y-z-axis right here. So these are three walls, and we're kind of looking into the tetrahedron, and this front panel here of it, the front side of it, is missing. But we have the base and the two back sides, just not the front side. So now that we have a picture, how are we going to use a triple integral to find the volume of this solid tetrahedron? Well, we're going to need to do a couple of things. First, we're going to need to find limits of integration for x, y, and z. Then we're going to need to decide in which order we're going to integrate the variable. So we're going to turn this into an iterated integral, and we need to decide if we're going to integrate first with respect to z or y or x, what our order of integration is going to be, and then we need to find corresponding limits of integration for each variable. Well, the easiest way to do that is to look at our pictures to find limits of integration. So if we're looking above at the tetrahedron here, and this is the base in our xy coordinate plane, we know that the value of x will never be less than 0 or greater than 2, right? This value right here, this, these are the only values that x will ever attain. It's going to be between 0 and 2. So our limits of integration for x are going to be 0 to 2. Now our limits of integration for y, you notice, are going to be 0 to 4. However, the value of y depends on which x value we're looking at. For example, if we're looking at this x value right here, the value of y is at this point. If we're looking at an x value here, the value of y is at this point. 
Well, the y value is going to be dictated by some function for y in terms of x. What we need to do is take our equation up here, 2x plus y plus z. We need to plug in 0 for z. In other words, get rid of it there. So we'll be left with 2x plus y equals 4. And then we need to solve this for y. When we do, we'll subtract 2x from both sides and get y equals 4 minus 2x. 4 minus 2x is an equation that models this line and will give us the corresponding value of y no matter where we are for x. So we say that our limits of integration for y are going to be from 0 to 4 minus 2x, like that. Our limits of integration for z, similarly to our limits of integration for y, we know that the lowest value z will obtain will be 0, because if we look at the z-axis here, z can have this value down here at the origin. That's a 0 value of z. But we don't know how high the value of z can go. And the height of this solid is going to be dependent on our original equation here. In order to find the height of the solid, no matter which point we take in this region here, if, if we evaluate this function at each of these different points, the height of the tetrahedron is going to be different at all those points. The equation that we use to model the height is going to be this original equation just solved for z. So what we want to do is just go ahead and subtract 2x and y from both sides and get 4 minus 2x minus y. Our limits of integration for z are then 0 and 4 minus 2x minus y, like that. Now that we have our limits of integration, we just need to figure out our order of integration. And the way that you want to do that is by looking at the number of variables involved in the limits of integration. So what you can see here is that the limits of integration for z have two variables involved, x and y. There's two variables involved there. For y, there's one variable involved. It's just all constants, but there's this x. So there's one here. And for x, there's zero variables involved. We just have two constant limits of integration, so there's zero, like that. So then our order of integration should be in descending order of the number of variables involved in these limits of integration. So we should integrate first with respect to the variable that has the most variables involved in its limits of integration. That's z. There's two variables involved here. So z should be the first variable with respect to which we integrate. And then y is going to be the second because there's only one here. And then x will be the third variable with respect to which we'll integrate. So that's going to be our order z, then y, then x. All we need to do now is set up our integral. So we've got our triple integral here, and we can just write it like this. We know that our order of integration is going to be z, then y, then x. So we can go ahead and write here dz, dy, dx, like this, because you always start with the inside and work your way to the outside. So here z is first, y is second, x is third. Then we're going to work the other way with our limits of integration. So because z is on the inside, the innermost integral should have limits of integration for z. So we're going to say from 0 to 4 minus 2x minus y. Next is y, so we're working our way out. We're going to have from 0 to 4 minus 2x. And then finally for x, which is going to be from 0 to 2. And that's it. That's how we set up our integral. Now we just need to evaluate it. So because z is on the inside and our limits of integration for z are on the inside, we work our way inside out. That means we're going to start with z and integrate with respect to z first. So how do we integrate this with respect to z when we only have dz, dy, dx? Well, we just need to think really about the fact that this is not just dz, dy, dx. It's really 1 times dz, dy, dx. Well, the integral of 1 with respect to z is just z. So what we do is we'll keep the integral here 0 to 2, and then this one 0 to 4 minus 2x. We'll keep those guys. Then the integral of 1 is z, so we'll say z here. We're going to be evaluating that on the interval z equals 0 to z equals 4 minus 2x minus y. We're going to leave then our dy and dx like this. Now I think it's really important to go ahead and write z equals 0 and z equals 4 minus 2x minus y instead of just these limits of integration on their own without the z equals. 
It doesn't so much matter in this particular step, but a lot of times you'll have multiple variables left over inside and you don't want to forget that you're going to be plugging in these limits of integration for z instead of for some other variable. So because we just integrated with respect to z, I like to write z equals 0 and z equals this upper limit of integration. So now to evaluate there, we'll just plug in, we'll say 0 to 2 and this one 0 to 4 minus 2x. Plugging in our upper limit of integration for z, we'll get 4 minus 2x minus y. Then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration, 0. Well, when we plug in 0, we just get 0. There's no need to write an additional minus 0. So we'll just go ahead and leave it this way and then say dy dx. Now our integral is simplified enough that we can move on and integrate with respect to y. y is next because we have dy here on the inside and our limits of integration with respect to y here on the inside. So integrating with respect to y will leave this for x. The integral of 4 with respect to y will be 4y. The integral of negative 2x with respect to y will be negative 2xy because we're treating x as a constant. And then the integral of negative y will be negative 1 half y squared. We're going to be evaluating that on the interval y equals 0 to y equals 4 minus 2x, and we'll leave the dx here. Now if we plug in 4 minus 2x for y, we'll get the integral from 0 to 2. Plugging in 4 minus 2x for y, we'll get 4 times 4 minus 2x minus 2x times 4 minus 2x minus 1 half times 4 minus 2x quantity squared. We then subtract whatever we got when we plugged in 0, but of course plugging in 0 for y will get 0, 0, and 0. All three of those terms will cancel, so this is really all we need to write. We add the dx there. If we simplify that, we'll say the integral from 0 to 2. Distributing the 4 across the 4 minus 2x, we'll get 16 minus 8x. Distributing the negative 2x across the 4 minus 2x, we'll get minus 8x plus 4x squared. Then if we leave the minus 1 half and we take 4 minus 2x times 4 minus 2x, we'll get 16 minus 8x minus another 8x is minus a 16x plus a 4x squared, and then we've got dx. Just continuing our simplification process here, we'll get 16. We can combine these negative 8x and negative 8x to get negative 16x plus 4x squared. And then we'll say negative 1 half times 16 is a minus 8. Negative 1 half times a negative 16x is a plus 8x. And a negative 1 half times 4x squared is a minus 2x squared dx. Combining like terms, we'll get the integral from 0 to 2. 16 minus 8 gives us 8. That takes care of these two. Negative 16x plus 8x is a negative 8x, so we'll get negative 8x there. And then a 4x squared minus 2x squared is a positive 2x squared dx. Now that we've simplified, we can easily integrate with respect to x. When we integrate, we'll get 8x minus 4x squared plus 2 thirds x cubed, and we're going to be evaluating that on the interval, x equals 0 to x equals 2. Plugging in 2, our upper limit of integration, we'll get 16, 2 times 2 is 4, times 4 is 16, so minus 16 there. 2 cubed is 8, times 2 thirds is plus 16 thirds. And then when we subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0, we just get minus 0, minus 0, minus 0. This is all going to cancel, so we don't have to write it. As you can see, our 16 minus 16 is going to cancel, and we're just left with a final answer of 16 thirds, which is the volume of the tetrahedron enclosed by this plane and the three coordinate planes.